Welcome to the Grizzly Patriots of Colorado podcast, defending liberty and freedom with eternal vigilance. My name is Grizz. Welcome to the show. Grateful that you tuned in. From everyone, from the first listener to the returning listener, I really appreciate you being here. Today's episode is a light topic, kind of a gee whiz Colorado trivia episode, if you will, in keeping with the building of that foundation of understanding what Colorado is all about. I thought I would cover some symbologies of Colorado you might not be aware of. This includes what the Colorado flag represents, what the Colorado seal represents, and an overview of some of the things that have been named to represent Colorado. So all is well here in the Bear Cave. Nothing too fascinating to report since the last episode, except for, uh, you know, a few days of minus 25 degrees Fahrenheit we had here for two straight days. Had the wood stove glowing hot red to battle against the furnace from running 24-7. It's certainly time to restock that wood pile on the front porch. That is for sure. Another quick update. Sadly, I discovered a technical speed bump, if you will, while assembling and testing some of the new equipment that arrived for the video portion of the channel. Long story short, it might be quite a few episodes before you see my dashing bearded mug on YouTube and Rumble. So please continue to be patient. I'm not giving up. It will be done. All it takes is set up a worthwhile podcast and vlog. It is lots of time and lots of money, of course, so bear with me. Please take a quick second to subscribe, follow, hit the like button, and hit that notification bell and smash that rumble.com button. Really appreciate it. So let's dive into the show, shall we? So let's look at a little bit of history of early Colorado. Colorado comes from the Spanish ruddy or red. The early Spanish explorers in the Rocky Mountain region named a river they found the Rio Colorado for the reddish silt that the water carried down from the mountains. The name of the state, Colorado, has its origin in the Spanish language as the word for colored red. This was a name chosen for the Colorado for Colorado as a territory in 1861 by Congress. So in 1861, Colorado became a territory. In 1875, however, a convention drew up the Constitution for the prospective state, which was admitted to the Union in 1876 as the 38th state. Because Colorado's admission occurred 100 years after the signing of the Declaration of Independence, it became known as the Centennial State. Okay, let's move on to the state seal, the Colorado State Seal. The seal of the state of Colorado is an adapt adaptation of the territorial seal, which was adapted by the First Territorial Assembly on November 6, 1861. The only changes made to the territorial seal design being the substitution of the words State of Colorado and figures 1876 for the corresponding inscriptions on the territorial seal. The first General Assembly of the State of Colorado approved the adoption of the state seal on March 15, 1877. The Colorado Secretary of State alone is authorized to affix the Great Seal of Colorado to any document whatsoever. Ever. Okay, believe it or not, the seal is to be 2.5 inches in diameter. And for those not on YouTube or Rumble, I am displaying uh, images of of the seal. So uh, yeah, hop on over there if you want to see a picture of the seal and the flag and other things as we continue. So I'll try to be as descriptive as possible for those of you only on the podcast. So at the top of the seal, we have the Eye of Providence, or all-seeing eye, within a triangle, for which golden rays radiate. Below that eye is a bundle of birch or elm rods with a battle axe bound together inside it. 
with a ribbon of red, white, and blue with the words Union and Constitution. The bundle of of rods bound together symbolizes strength, which is lacking in the single rod. The X symbolizes authority and leadership. So below that bundle is a heraldic shield bearing across the top a red sky behind three snow-capped mountains and clouds above them. Yes, that's the Rocky Mountains, if you could not have guessed. The lower half of the shield has two minor tools, the pick and sledgehammer on a golden ground, thus representing the, the gold rush here in Colorado. You may have heard the term Pike's Peak or Bust. That came from the gold rush here in Colorado and those coming here for the gold. Below the shield on a scroll is the motto, Nil Sign New Mine. I probably just destroyed that. Those Latin words meaning nothing without providence or nothing without the deity. At the bottom of the seal is the figures 1876, the year Colorado came into statehood. All right, Colorado state flag. The state flag was adopted on June 5th, 1911. Fantastic year there. By an act of General Assembly, the flag was adopted to be used on all occasions when the state is officially and publicly represented with the privilege of use by all citizens as they deem fitting and appropriate. Laws pertaining to the use of the national flag are also applicable to the state flag. I sure would like to compare the U.S. flag code and uh, see if that's actually being followed with the Colorado state flag. That'd be interesting. The flag consists of three alternate stripes of equal width and at right angles to the staff. So picture the Colorado state flag, if you can. Those listening on the podcast, we have a blue stripe on top and a blue stripe on the bottom with a white stripe in the center. The two outer stripes to be blue of the same color as the blue field of the national flag and the middle stripe to be white, the proportion of the flag being a width of two-thirds of its length. And I'm displaying here on YouTube and Rumble kind of other statistics, but uh, it may be kind of confusing for those on the podcast to follow along, so I'll forego going over those. The flag was originally designed by Andrew Carlisle Johnson. Precise colors of red and blue were not designated in the 1911 legislation, and some controversy arose over these colors. On February 28, 1929, the General Assembly stipulated the precise colors of red and blue as the same as the national flag. Controversy also arose over the size of the letter C. On March 31, 1964, the General Assembly further modified the 1911 legislation by revising the distance from the staff for the letter C and its diameter. The colors of the Colorado flag represent the environmental features of the state. White symbolizes the snow on her mountains. Gold acknowledges the abundant Colorado sunshine. Red represents Colorado's red soil. And the blue is a symbol of her clear blue skies. Colorado has flown many flags. Three countries and eight territories have laid claim to and flown their flags over what is now the state of Colorado. Okay, let's cover just a few of the Colorado symbols and icons that uh, have been named to represent Colorado. Yes, we have a state amphibian, the western tiger salamander. State animal being the Rocky Mountain Bighorn Sheep, and I learned something here, the state bird, the lark bunting. And again, all pictures are being shown here on Rumble and YouTube for those listening on the podcast. So again, hop on over there and uh, look at the pretty pictures. State cactus is a claret cup cactus. I have many of these on my property here, so I'll have to be aware of uh, not to harm those little guys. State fish, which I thought the rainbow trout was it, but it is the greenback cutthroat trout. State flower, Rocky Mountain Columbine. I believe the official one is the lavender and white Columbine. And get your groove on, the state folk dance is the square dance. 
state fossil being the Stagosaurus. Okay, we get on to state gemstone here, the aquamarine. And I am zipping over a few of these for those looking on YouTube and Rumble. So, uh, yeah, scan these over as you're at your leisure. State reptile, western painted turtle. The state rock being the Yule marble, which I thought that was kind of cool, being Yule. But anyway, that's just how I look at it. And yes, we have an unofficial state soil, seats soil. So I know it was kind of a lighthearted uh, episode here. Just, uh, you know, it's the holidays. I didn't have time to do much research or um, building of a, a full episode here. But I uh, just thought I'd throw this out here for you. It's kind of neat little trivia, things you may already know and may have learned. So I promise you we'll be digging into the issues. I've been scanning the, the Colorado Spring Gazette, the Denver Post, uh, the Colorado Sun, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So I've been scanning for issues to cover here in the show in depth. Um, that I promise you that is coming. So please, please, please put your comments down below what you want to talk about in upcoming episodes, and you'll get a kudos mention on the episode that includes that includes that topic. So fantastic. So once again, I really appreciate you guys tuning in. Uh, I know its channel's growing. I know it may seem a little slow and a little maybe lighthearted not too in-depth yet of Colorado issues, but so please be patient. Please subscribe. Please follow, hit that like button. Let's grow that algorithm. So when we really hit the trail running hard here, we get the word out and we can start full discussions on these, on these topics. So my name is Grizz and I am out.